Hello, good evening. Welcome to this week's Spurimaisius. Dedicated to Lila Nishmas, you know, Shmayao Yosef Chaim Ben Yaakov Israel, Khan Kanievsky, Zerher Tzad Vikos Levroho. It is a it probably behoves me to tell you this Misa. I think I told it to you once before. But nevertheless it is something which is Nagea, so we can we can mention it and tell the story once again. Um, quite a few years ago, uh, when Rebbe Yitzchak Bender, Zechatzal Levrocha, passed away, so uh, one of the great Breslov uh, Rabbonim said that anybody who will um, who will ask for 30 days during the Shloshim of I believe Yitzchok, whatever you will ask for, he will get. You know, it seemed, it seemed at the time, remember, it seemed like a, a really wild kind of notion. And, uh, So at the time, it's a funny story. So at the time, at the time, I was really out of sorts. I was out of job, between jobs, whatever. And I had the car, and I couldn't really afford to have a car. And I couldn't afford to be without the car. You know how sometimes these things go when people are less than organized and less than than settled in their minds with Yishuv Adas. So, um, I didn't have money to pay for the insurance of the car. So as a result, I didn't pay, you know, I, did, I was driving without insurance. And anybody knows, you know, driving without insurance anywhere, specifically in, in America, um, it, you know, it's a very serious offense. Um, what happened was that I, I was, you know, stopped in routine thing twice. And, you know, I was ticketed for driving without a license. And I got a, a summons to court. Now, at the time, I'm sure that it's probably the same thing now. Uh, the first offense of driving without insurance is um, six months uh, suspension of or a year of suspended. A license, something like that. Um, and I had two. Plus, there was a minimum of a fine of two thousand dollars. You know, at least the first offense. Obviously, it didn't go down on further offenses. That um, that money went into um, a fund, you know, that paid uh, for people who were injured 
by vehicles that were not insured. You know, so, you know, that fund, you know, paid for whatever it is. That, uh, you can imagine if I didn't have a couple of hundred dollars to pay for the insurance, uh, or whatever it costs, I don't remember, uh, $2,000 for one, and who knows what it would have been for the second one, was like, forget about being able to drive, probably, I don't know, suspended for how many years. So, um, at the day of of the trial, I went to downtown Brooklyn, where they have you know uh, courts, whatever. And that was you know at that period of time, everybody really, took just passed away, and I heard that. And uh, when I went there. I, uh, in this, the trials were on the second floor, the first floor were all little cubicles of ambulance chasers, you know, small time lawyers, you know. So I got one and asked him how much would it take, you know, for him to represent me or whatever. He says, 50 bucks. Okay, 50 bucks, I think 50 bucks. So we went up to the courtroom. And on the way, you know, on the way, I just remember, you know, they said, during the Shloshim of Rabbi Yitzchok, um, she said, ask for whatever, you, you know, whatever you need. You'll get it. And so I remember I asked, Rabbi Yitzchok, you know, that, uh, that I should be, uh, you know, that I should, that I should, should, should reprieve me from, from that, you know, just the first thing that came to my mind. I was going and I was very pressured, you know, whatever it is. So I asked for that. Anyhow, we're going into the room. The room was on the second floor. It was a rather small room that had, oh, I mean, you know, there was this the bench of the judge in one place for um, a witness. And there must have been, I don't know, 30, 40 seats, something like this, inside this room that looked like, now you know, like a gallery that was going up, kind of like an amphitheater, kind of like. So it was a small room. It was jam packed. It was jam packed. There must have been maybe 100 people there uh, waiting, you know, traffic, whatever. And at the time, you know, that was the pre-computer days. Um, so everything was paperwork. Um, so there we were, you know, uh, <laughs> the, first came a ca the first case came up. And the guy went back and forth and back and forth and whatever it is and it took about half an hour for this case to get over you're talking about I don't know how many hours were you know available for you know maybe half a day when the judge doesn't sit all day and uh, the second case I also don't remember what it was but it also turned out to be tangled and complicated, the guy came this, the guy came that, whatever. That took another half an hour. So, already an hour into into the day, and there were only just two cases that, were, that actually, you know, were tried, discussed, whatever. The third the third case was the the defendant was a lawyer a little jewish lawyer that looked like um like a double of of alan dershowitz 
could have looked like his brother, a doppelganger. It looked much like him. And apparently, I mean, this small-time lawyer dreamed all his life, you know, to, you know, throw an Alan Dershowitz kind of performance in, in, in court. I don't know. His, the whole thing was that by his case was it turned out that he was um, he was waiting online for a toll booth and he probably he saw a shorter line you know elsewhere so he broke off the line and went to the other line and you know a traffic guy stopped and gave him a ticket. The guy got his life's wish. He got the policeman on the stand. And he grilled him. And it was going back and forth. He was doing the whole Perry Mason <laughs> shtick. <laughs> I mean, the judge was like, <laughs> like that. <laughs> it was about an hour it was it was taking an hour I'm telling you there was about 100 people in the room the third case took almost an hour by itself the judge was at his wits end he didn't know what to do I mean what can he tell him you know, the guy is just, he's, he's, he's grilling the, 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 the witness well, and this, and we did you that, and did you this, and did you that, and, uh, forget about it. The people in the audience, I mean, the audience, the people they were waiting for trial were laughing. I mean, the whole thing was like a, was a comedy show, but nevertheless, this is what was going on. At that point, uh, after two hours, whatever it is, Ramesh, you weren't here when I began telling the story, this is when it was during the Shloishim of, of Rabbi Yitzhak Bender. And they said if anybody asked for anything during the Shloishim, we would get it. And I was caught driving without, without insurance. Well, it's just in New York twice. So I went to, I went to, to court and I, you know, on the way I asked, well, I said, you know, please get me out of this because of Rabbi Yitzhak. So that was the story. We came into the room over there that I, I hired a shyster for fifty dollars, <laughs> you know, to try to represent me. Whatever I didn't know what else to do, and we got into a room. There were like a hundred people in the room, and the first three cases took two hours. I mean, the people I could not believe it. You know, it's like, you know. anyhow, after two hours, two something hours, whatever it is. Uh, a woman comes in, you know, and, uh, a mature woman comes in, and she looks at the whole thing, and she becomes very upset. Apparently, she was some kind of a, um, um, uh, I don't know, well, a manager over there, whatever, case manager, whatever it is, she was of the court system, and she came there, and she was very upset. She says, what's going on? I mean, so we, we'll never finish this, whatever it is. So the cases those days, it was pre-computer days, nothing was computerized. So what, all the cases, they were in these, like, they were rolled in, like, rolls. The papers were rolled. And there was, like, a, I don't know, a rubber band or a sticker on it. It was a rubber band, and there was a sticker about what is the name of the defendant. You know, whatever it is. And she went to, you know, behind the judge's... Uh, Stand whatever it is, and she took a whole pile of of uh, of these rolls of these cases, and she took one and she said, uh, I don't know, Enrico Gonzalez, whatever it is, says, go home. She throws it in the garbage. Another one, John Smith, yeah, like, go home. She throws it in the garbage. <laughs> she said, Aaron Grundman, yes, like, go home. I threw it into the garbage. <laughs> I'm stepping out of the courtroom. My lawyer tells me, don't look back. Just walk straight out. Don't look back. (laughs) 
So that was during the Shloshim of Levi Yitzchok Bender when one of the Bristol Gates of the time said, if you ask for anything during the Shloshim of Levi Yitzchok, you'll get it. I mean, I use it for, you know, as well that. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't take the whole thing like, you know, serious, not serious, whatever. I just took it, you know, because, uh, beside that, you know, like, uh, <laughs> I was in distress, so I used it. So, the only thing I can tell you, yesterday, Yom Israel lost, you know, God Lador. So, definitely, during the Shloshim, you should ask with his host for everything that you need. You know, I, I am not, I'm not a god who I cannot say one way or another. But I'm saying, what are you going to lose? Right? What are you going to lose? And his host, ask for whatever that you need. You know, be smart and ask. So, with this, we start tonight's uh, Supremacius. So, Lid uh, Nishmash Rebchaim Kanievsky, and let's get into uh, today's Supremacius. So, as we said, um, the simple one had a simple messenger that brought him a message from the king. It says, what does it say? Read it to me. I cannot read. It says, I'll tell you what's orally what's written in it. He says, the king wants you to come. So he says, you're not kidding, right? He says, of course not. It's no joke. Immediately he was filled with joy. He knew Ren said to his wife, the king sent for me. But for what? Why? She asked him. He didn't have a chance to answer her at all. As he immediately became electrified with joy, and right away, he went to travel the messenger. He went inside and sat in the covered wagon, and he found their clothing and became happier and happier. We said last week, sort of like, when you start your journey into Avodah Hashem, Usually, you don't see what it is that you believe in. You are you're going on, quote-unquote, blind faith, as it were. Like, when a person has all kinds of pranasa problems, and... He has, he has no income. And he turns to Kodesh Baruch And it still doesn't come. So he said, well, you know, I trust you. I put my faith in you. And I'm waiting for you. Suddenly comes a job. He said, wow, that's very good, whatever it is. And then... The people of the job says, says, no, no, forget about it. We'll take it so, you know, that's harder when you don't have anything and then you have something that means taken away. Mishazek with Bitochen. Okay, it didn't come to me. It's, you know, in certain days you have to get upset. They told me, whatever. Okay, big center. Then comes another one and goes away. Then comes another one and goes away. Or whatever, if you are mischazik with emuna and bitochen, it could be in anything. It could be shlombais. It could be with health. It could be with anything. You just mischazik be emuna. That's the way Kodesh Baruch wants. And and the truth is that that many times you can come into a. Um, this is even more difficult than than the not knowing at all. Is the fact that let's say someone has um, 
health problems. And a person, a person may be, you know, maybe suffering some pain or this or discomfort or whatever it is that really. Now, some people take to uh, Yisurim harder than others, and you can come, you can find yourself coming to Kodesh Baruch Hu. And, you know, you would go to a doctor, obviously, to take care of it. That's a Kodesh Baruch Hu says, yeah, but, you know, maybe it's for Kapara for me, whatever it is. And, and then you say, Shalom, you know, um, please uh, give me a full Shlema. I'll give you Parnasa, I'll give you Shlema Bais or whatever. And in the meantime, you know, give me the koyach to accept whatever you're giving me, to accept it with simcha. And you are, you are thrown into some kind of a mind pretzel because what, I, what, what am I asking when I'm asking Kodesh Baruch Hu to accept, you know, whatever is going on with me with simcha, what is actually bothering me? Is it the objective problem that is bothering me? Or I just don't want to suffer? And that's why I'm asking for the Muna to receive the Surim Behavo. Why I'm saying this? What am I actually asking for? I'm actually for, you know, that it shouldn't bother me that it bothers me. You know, it shouldn't bother me that I'm in pain. It shouldn't bother me that whatever it is. I'm able to live with it, you know, so it shouldn't trouble me. So you can get into like, do I mean it? Don't I mean it? Is it the fact that I want to accept it, Be'ahavo, is it really that I want to accept it, Be'ahavo? Is it really I'm playing games with myself? The answer is, it doesn't matter. You ask Kaddish Baruch Hu to accept Be'ahavo, you ask Kaddish Baruch Hu to take away the Yisurim from you, and ah, the, the two are, are, are contradicting one another. Okay, but so they're contradicting one another. It's not, your, it's not your job to resolve all the contradictions. It's fine. And bye, yeah. This is what we're dealing here with the time with the Tmimas. Just go ahead with Tmimas. No. But the thing is that when you go with Tmimas and while this is going on, you're still battling between yourself. Do I mean it? Don't I mean it? I mean it like this. I mean it like that. I should be like this. I'm good for me. Not good for me. Blah, blah, blah. All those. But you keep on going on. Suddenly the problem clears up. Because when you are going into a Muna, suddenly things clear up. Suddenly, suddenly you see it. You can see it many times. You know, in, in many different things. It could be Parnasa, it could be traveling to Uman, it could be different things that it seems to you like there's no way that you're getting out of it. And when you're getting into the point where you're saying, getting to the point where you're saying, well, no, you know, just, I accept it the way that you want it and I'm just going ahead with it. And suddenly, you're in the covered wagon of Emuna. And when you're in the covered wagon of Emuna, it doesn't bother you anymore. It is stuck. The problem is not solved yet. But it doesn't bother you. You Because you're in the covered wagon of Amuna or Bitoha. And there you find clothing and you become happier and happier. Because the truth of the matter is that... Um,
Just one second, there's just a phone call going on here. The truth of the matter is that when you are in Amuna and you don't have the Yeshua yet, It's, you, you haven't been delivered yet, but you are already in a Muna. There is no greater pleasure and safety than being totally dependent upon a Kaddish Baruch You still didn't get that Muna. You still didn't get. You still didn't. I'm sorry. You still didn't get your Yeshua. You still. But if you manage to get into the Muna, into the covered wagon of the Bitochen, there, there's there's no greater sense of freedom than knowing that you are in need and that you are that you need Yeshua and you're waiting on a Kaddish Baruch Hu. just waiting for Hashem Baruch Hu. that's all you're doing you're just waiting because you know this is where Yeshua is going to come from there is no other time when you're ever ever going to be happier first you don't know even your Amunah says, why, why is this happening? I don't know, just run into it. You get in the covered wagon of Amuna, you know, and then even though you're not yet delivered, you're already becoming happier and happier because you're dependent solely on Hashem is Baruch. And, you know, anybody who has been there, you know, can attest for that. And let's go ahead with the story. And meanwhile, stories were told that the governor committed corruption and he was removed by the king. And the king decided it would be a good it would be good for the governor to be a simple man. Because a simple man would guide the state with truth and integrity since he would not think of clever schemes. The king proceeded to make the simple one governor. He sent an order that the simple one, for whom he sent, will be governor. And since he would be traveling by the way of the governor's city, men should be posted at the city's gates. gates, and immediately upon his arrival, they should detain him and crown him governor. And so they did. They stood at the gates and immediately upon his passing there, they stopped him and told him that he had been made governor. So he said, you're not joking, right? He asked him. This is right. It's not a joke. They replied. So, the simple one immediately became governor with full authority. Now that his muzzle has improved, and the muzzle makes one wise, he received a bit, a bit of understanding. Nevertheless, he did not make use of his wisdom at all. He simply ruled with his simplicity as before, and guided the state with simplicity, truth, and integrity. No corruption was found in him. And regarding, now Rabbeinu says, you know, in, in parenthetically, as it said, regarding management of the state, there's no need for great intellect or wisdom, just honesty and simplicity. When two people would come before him for judgment, he would say, you are innocent and you are guilty, according to his true simplicity, without any guile or deceit. And so he managed everything truthfully and was highly beloved in the state. So here we move to the next stage. 
if you remember, when the king decided to send messengers for the two sons, the clever one and the simple one, he sent a clever one to the clever one and the simple one to the simpleton. Now, we said before, how do you find a simple person, you know, in the in the in the in the, in the city capital? You know, that's that's where you know the, the the emperor's palace. Everybody is exceedingly, you know, sophisticated over there. Where do you find simple people? So we said that the treasury, the mess of treasury, was Dafka simple person because they don't want to make somebody who's full of ideas, full of schemes, to become the you know to become in, in charge of the treasuries because. With all his ideas and his fancy thinking, he would end up, you know, squandering the money, embezzling the money. Because, because he thinks, he thinks too much. He's relying on his chachma. So, on the treasuries, they put Dafka, a simple person. But all the other things, you know, justice and culture and technology and commerce and 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 army, whatever it is, still they had the clever people. Only the treasury, which is the shefa, the shefa loki, this was in charge was 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 placed in the charge of a simple man. When the king sees that the simple the simple one is stepping up, you know, when the king calls the simple one to him, that signifies that suddenly simplicity gains grace in the eyes of people. Suddenly, uh, until then, it's people who are sophisticated, who are clever, who are funny, who are, whatever it is, they're the ones, you know, there's no sechen, that's the... Uh, but the person... The simple simplicity is considered to be, yeah, you know, like a joking matter. But now that the king has sent for the simple person, for the simple one, he said, before we said the governor, you know, he behaved, he behaved properly. You know, the king sent a letter to him to send notice to the two sons. And the governor says, you know, the simple person, they said he's just wearing a, a single coat. So the governor says, you know, it's not befitting for the a person with a single, single coat you know, to come before the king. So, um, so he gave him clothing and the whole thing. So you see the governor supposedly behaved, you know, very decently. So why do we say that, you know, there's all kinds of notices that the governor was behaving, you know, with corruption, and whatever it is. Uh, the answer is that the governor, until now, was behaving normally, like clever people. You know, they say that if a person were ever to visit uh, the kitchen of a Chinese restaurant, he would never ever eat in a Chinese restaurant again. Well, I see how dirty it is and how it's going, you know. The same thing is happening 
in in the 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 office of the prime minister and in, in municipalities and where all the clever people are all uh, uh, jockeying for positions and they're all full of schemes all the time how to circumvent this one to overcome this one and to be part of this and to come that everybody has some kind of a scheme in his mind in order to further his his interests whatever it is you know all this is all of it, all of it but part of it you know, is coming out now in the 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 trial of Netanyahu whatever it is you see all kinds of and it happened before also you know with the the previous prime minister that sat in jail and and you don't even know and you don't even know what is going on in the ministries themselves in the ministry of justice you know how what kind of schemes they're doing over there i mean it only came now to light you know because they want to bring a prime minister down so they're trumping up all kinds of bogus charges against him but these things worse things are happening in the ministry of health and whatever it is you you don't know and you don't want to know but all this is is considered just like you know that's the way of the world that's normal so all this is quote unquote normal while um as long as simplicity does not show its face. When the simple one comes into the stage and the king starts to elevate him, then suddenly the, the, uh, the contrast between simplicity and honesty and the, the rigor, you know, the, 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 the regular way of doing things, which is filled with, with schemes and with scheming and with jockeying for position and all that, suddenly you see it for what it is. Rabbeinu says that it's, it's, it's the, uh, when the Kedusha comes, you know, we learned it in Torah of Aleph, Torah of Beis, that uh, when when the 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 kedusha arrives, when the voice of the tzaddik arrives, the kedusha is being exposed. So that causes a great commotion by the tumah. Until now, everything was considered, you know, that's normal. That's the way we do things. But suddenly, when the tzaddik comes around, the contrast with his kedusha throws things out of whack for all the people who are doing things in a corrupt manner because that's the way things are done. We see this um, with Eliyahu and Novi. Uh, when, when he came uh, to the woman in, in, in uh, to Shanaim, you know, and, and the Almona, the, the widow, the, the small son, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu sent him to her so she could feed him. And he comes to her and he meets her and he sees her that she's collecting wood. So Leonov, he tells her, you know, what food do you have? So she says to him, I don't have anything. I just have, you know, a measure of, of flour I'm just looking for some wood in order to make, you know, that's time of hunger. They don't know, you know, decree there'll be no rain for three years. The whole thing that was going on. So, Kodesh Dafka sent him to her. So, she said, Yanova will get a little taste of Shtegur Rahman, is what it sees, you know, what his decrees are doing on ground level, as it were. So, so she told me she just have this, this last measure of flour. She's going to make a small little cake. And she will eat it together with her son. And then, you know, that's the last thing we had. Then they'll have to, you know, they have to starve to death. They don't have anything else anymore. 
So, yeah, no, we told her, don't worry about it. You make the cake, first of all, you make it for me, and then you eat it together with, with your son, the rest. And, and so it happened that she listened to him, and there was enough for him, there's enough for her, and from that moment on, she didn't lack, uh, you know, the, there was blessing in the, in the flour, and she had flour for bread all the time. For her and for for her son for Leon Novi. And then as the story goes, you know, her son dies. So she tells Leon Novi you came to me, you know, to remind, you know, in Shemaim, you know, how flawed I am. Until that time, she was a Tzadikas of the tongue. She had, she still had flour. You can see of the Bahamuna and the Novi. He said, you bake it and give me first to eat and then you and your son eat. And she does it. It was an unbelievable tzaddikis. But compared to Leo, to, to, to Leo Novi, I mean, she, she said to him, you know, you came to me to remind heaven of, of my flaws. Until you came, I was, you know, I was the, the moral citizen. Now you came, compared to your Kedusha, you know, my, my transgressions, you know, are very evident, and it's, it, it awakens up the denim on me, and, and, and her son died. So, you know, you know, David Kodesh Baruch says, I'm not sure you know, you send me to her, so she should give me now, you're taking her son. So, he makes... He brings the son back to life. But the point is that, that when when significant Kedusha, higher Kedusha comes in, it 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 brings about judgments to everybody around. Because until now, the overall level of Tzitkis was considered to be, okay, that's that's the way you do things. But when suddenly a tzaddik comes around, you know, that brings about problems, that brings about sirs, about judgments. Same thing here. When the tmimus of the simple one is being elevated, suddenly the blemishes of the governor are screaming to the eye, you know, just like, a, a, so um, he's being relieved. Why is being relieved? For the first time now, the kingdom is not going to be run with chachma, you know, with wisdom, but betmimus. Now the 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 betmimus now has a chain. Betmimus has a chain. It says, okay, let the betmimus run the country, not the chachma, but the betmimus. And suddenly, being that the king has appointed the, the Tmimus for the Malchus, everybody loves it. Because the nature of men is they love Tmimus. They love honesty. They love integrity. Because when somebody comes, you know, with all kinds of, of, of tricks and, 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 and people don't trust them. They don't even know that they're doing anything wrong, but they don't trust them. As long as everybody is just fooling around and everybody is like scheming. So you don't know who he is, who isn't, whatever it is. But when suddenly somebody with a tmimus dick comes and simply behaves, behaves honestly and open, people love it. And this is why the Tom has, has all these people that love him. Everybody loves him. Why? Because he's Yeshadik. You know, I used to have a friend that, uh, well, still my friend, uh, that he would go, you know, we'd go, let's say, to or whatever it is, to take care of things. Anybody who's ever been involved with Bituach me you know, would know, you know, knows that 
if you fill this papers and this this and then you do this and then you do that and then you go bring this and then you bring that and then you have to go this and you bring in and he's sure you have to eat. You know how it is, you know, come and go and come and go. Um, his way, there was he was he was a straight guy. He is a straight guy. He he took care of of some really complex inyanim very very easily and with very little trouble. But how did he do it? He would come to the to the, the woman who was taking care, you know, the clerk in Mitoach Lugi. Instead of looking at her as as somebody who is, you know, out to get him, and now it's a competition between me and her, he just came and he, he realized it's just a person. She's a person who was doing her job. Even the lawyer who was, you know, was, was suing you is also a person who's just doing his job. So you would come to her and say, listen, I, I'm, not, I'm really not very good at these things. Maybe you could do me a favor, take a piece of paper and write on this piece of paper all the things that I need to bring you. Just tell me. Tell me where to go. I'll go. I'll get them. He wasn't trying to, to get her and to fool her. and to She'll never say, listen, I, I'm not very good at this. Help me out. And they would do it for him. They would write everything down, they would write it, and they would go, and he would get in the Everything was done. I saw it myself many times. When you go to all these places, everything, you know, people say, you know, don't do this and that. You know, don't take your car to, you know, to be, to, to get inspected in Bechemish because they're looking for people. Why should they look for people? If something is wrong with my car, I want him to tell me what's wrong with my car. I don't want to drive, you know, with a car that is, you know, is uh, that is unsafe, right? I want to tell me what's wrong with the car. And you go like this, whatever it is, suddenly you find it's the people trying to get with, get away with things. These are the people the people don't trust. If you go simply, you go straight. Mishamam is vada yazod. You go to Kadosh Baruch Hu, and is I don't know. That's what I know. That's what I'm trying to do. I can't take this. I cannot take that. I have trouble with this. I have trouble with that. I can't. I am. I want to use, you know, the words of the tzaddik, the koyach of the tzaddik, the schus of the tzaddik, and and get to where I need to get. And what is I need because of that? Pasha tmiyus apshitus, and then bezat Hashem will be answered because Shbohu bezat Hashem should give us all the seichel to use our time in this world as well as we possibly can. And specifically now, you know, with the schus of Rabbeinu HaKadosh, we mechazek ourselves in Avodah Hashem. And now, during the shloishim of Rab Chaim Kanievsky, Zechet Tzalvikos Livrocha, Without Hashem, we should all, you know, be smart to ask the Kaddish Baruch for everything that we need, especially for Seichel Amiti, and to get close to the Tzaddik Emes. And for everything else that you need, you need Rafur, we need Rafur, we need uh, we need Parnasa, we need Shlombas, we need various things, Gid Labonim, whatever it is. A lot of different things that we need. Now is the time to ask for them. Kaddish Baruch should help, help us with Hashem, B'zoycha, B'zat Hashem, to all the Yeshuas, to all the Tzaddikim, and at the time we'll see Mashiach with Atashem soon in our days with Atashem. Amen.